Hello there, YouTube. I am NecroStevo, and it's time for our Week 5 battle in the Global Battle Association Season 9. Our opponent this week will be the Los Angeles Nitty Kings, coached by Danza. And of course, if you need his information, it's in the description. And I want to have a special shout out for Godoa Dragon at the beginning here. Thank you again for recording for me and such clutch notice. Now, if you do not want to sit through the brief team builder, that's fine. There's an annotation in the description for you to jump directly into the battle. However, these never take that long, so let's go right into the team. Now you can see his team, he has access to Palkia, Genesect, Tapu Bulu, Halucha, Heatran, Florges, Crocodile, Sovali, Gengar, komo -O, and Mega Alakazam, with Gengar and komo -O serving as his two Z users. Now then, uh, tough, tough matchup this week. The way that I kind of approach this is to kind of be creative with my team building, but also prepare for very expected threats. For example, something as basic as I have two fairies, he only really has one real fairy, switch him being Heatran. So some of those things for me were just like, okay, I need to make sure I can handle that because I can't just bring Scarf Xerneas if he has such an easy switch into Heatran every single time I take something out. So, I was kind of thinking about things in that way. So you can see the team that I brought is a little bit more creative. Let's just go through the sets really quickly. You can see uh, that I have a Slurpuff with Belly Drum. This is actually one of our um, win conditions this week. I gave it Salak Berry so that after a Belly Drum and a Substitute, or Substitute then Belly Drum, I would get the Unburdened boost and then get plus one, which would allow me to outspeed a, Halu a Halucha trying to come in on grassy terrain to outspeed my whole team. Um, that would also give me enough power behind Play Rough and Drain Punch to just kind of hit his whole team. With a single Stealth Rock up, I can literally one hit KO his entire team, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so Slurpuff is just really, really strong here. I do need to get up Stealth Rocks or at the very least um, Barbarical which is actually my dedicated lead for this week's matchup, needs to weaken some things for Slurpuff. Speaking of Barbarical, we can go ahead and look at him. Barbarical, after it gets a Shell Smash Off, easily outruns um, Mega Alakazam, and it will also outrun Scarf Bulu and Genesect. I went with uh, the set that I went with because it really didn't need an item to secure KOs. Um, the move set here is Liquidation of Dragon Claw and Poison Jab just because that hits his entire team. And I don't know that he would expect me to bring Barbarical in this matchup. And if I did bring it, I don't know if he would expect coverage moves like that. So, um, of course, Dragon Claw is there for Palkia. Poison Jab is there for Tapu Bulu. Everything else gets hit by Liquidation. So, um, I just kind of have that as my dedicated lead here because I can click Shell Smash against anything that he would lead with. Um, I, I toyed with the idea of throwing Lumberry on there or White Herb again, but um, just because I don't necessarily think I'll have an opportunity to get up multiple uh, Shell Smashes, especially because it's very likely he could bring Scarf Genesect or just Thunderbolt me twice, uh, I don't think I'll get an opportunity to do that. So I, do, I really just want to Shell Smash immediately and then start throwing off attacks is what the idea behind Barbarical is. After that, we have our nice defensive fortress. I have enough special defense here in order to take Shadow Balls from Gengar, um, especially if he's not Life Orbed. Then um, this spread in particular, say he brings um, some type of sub disable or anything that doesn't have a boosting item, or if he brings a Z Crystal, I'll be able to take three Shadow Balls after uh, my leftovers recovery. And then the rest, I just have Gyro Ball and Earthquake so that things can't come in and set up on my fortress. I want to maintain that, at least shipping away at things or something like Gengar as 2AKO, that type of mentality there. Um, and I really only need a layer of Spikes or Stealth Rocks. If I can get multiple, I will take it. But I, again, this I feel like this is going to be a pretty offensive match, so I don't know how many opportunities I will get to do things like that. Up next we have our Tentacruel, which is a relatively standard set, but I did put Knockoff on there just to hit Gengar for some sort of damage. Uh, I have enough speed on there to outspeed the Bulu, and this way I can put Spin on my Tentacruel and not have to worry about it on Fortress. Uh, Hydragon, it took me forever to breed this Hydragon, because I needed to have six IVs 
in every stat because I'm running a more physically oriented High Dragon, but I have Draco Meteor to hit the Komoo. Draco Meteor on a just a Komoo that doesn't have any bulk investment is a guaranteed one shot. Uh, and especially if he's running something like Clanging Cell Scales, and I don't even have to play around with rolls on a possibly bulkier one because he'll lose on the defensive side and then I can get some chip with my more offensive moves on the physical side and then I can go for Draco Meteor. Um, this also allows me to have a more solid way to hit Heatran. I went with Assault Vest here to take hits from Heatran a little bit better and on the off chance he decides to go with say Alakazam and go for Focus Blast or Dazzling Gleam, I can take those hits too and one shot some of those Pokemon back. Uh, this will also serve as a dedicated switch in to something like his Heliolisk. Uh, and even though this it does hit a little bit less hard on the physical side, um, I just think that that's going to have overall better coverage against his team just because he he would expect the more special High Dragon, I think, and prepare and have sets more garnered to take those special hits. After that, we have a little bit of a different Xerneas set. With Xerneas, we just decided to go with a nice Calm Mind substitute build. Um, not not exactly like Crocoon, of course, just because of that Suicune's thing. But here I was, just because of the Pokemon he could bring against my Xerneas, I was very tempted to bring Scarf. But with just things like Heatran and Genesect in the back, um, the best thing I can do against Genesect is Scarf. And then we're both Scarf, then we're tied, and I'm risking a speed tie. And then, of course, if I am Scarf, every time I throw off a move, then his uh, Heatran gets to come in and annoy my team. So I decided to go for a Moonblast, Hidden Power, Ground, Calm Mind subset, just because I can set it up on a few different Pokemon on his team. And the speed is still really nice. I have the speed there just to, um, to um, max and tie the, the non-Scarf Genesect. But uh, yeah, having Hidden Power, Ground here is really, really nice um, just to hit the Heatran, so. That's kind of the team. We're gonna go ahead and get into the matchup and thank you all for watching the team builder. Alrighty, so thank you all for watching the team builder. If you didn't, a brief rundown of the team is going to be a Sash Barbarical, pretty standard Tentacruel, uh, a Belly Drum Salak Berry Substitute Sorpuff, a nice specially defensive Fortress, and then we have our physically offensive Hydreigon with Draco Meteor, and then another Calm Mind Substitute Xerneas. Uh, if I'm honest, I was really floored on Team Preview that he did not have Heatran. Um, that immediately made me think, okay, does that mean that the Gengar is, like, Scarfed in case I bring a Scarf Xerneas, or um, is the Genesect Scarf in case of that? And then, what type of type to expect from Sivali? Just from the Team Preview, I was expecting maybe fairy or maybe just regular Silvali with a hell item like leftovers to be bulky and parting shot around um, especially because of a lack of a fighting type on my team uh, from this I also expected the um, the Komo'o to possibly be some type of setup sweeper because with this setup I didn't really know what to expect from Palkia or the Komo'o just because they could be pretty versatile in this setup so we are going to go with our dedicated lead with this Barbarical and I'm expecting him to lead with Genesect, just because it's a good catch-all lead. He can kind of just U-turn out and see what I go for. Um, he does lead with the Genesect, and I am going to stick to my game plan here of just immediately clicking Shell Smash. Uh, worst case scenario, he is Scarfed, and then he gets off a Thunderbolt, but that'll just take me down to my Sash, and then I get to use Liquidation afterwards. So um, I guess he could also carry some type of... Um, coverage like status move but I wasn't really thinking that that would be very likely so we get the shell smash up he goes into his Silvali fairy and I look down at the screen and it goes oh that's a fairy type great thank you very much game for letting me know that because sometimes it is hard to tell what type it is just by looking so I go for poison jab knowing that this will KO unless he's just max defense and he's max defense or very close to it because that did not kill that Silvali if I had KO'd that Silvali without getting paralyzed, his team would have been in for a world of hurt. Unfortunately, that is not the case there. And I was I even contemplated clicking uh, Shell Smash again there, but I was worried he would um, 
kind of take advantage of that and and be able to set up or something like that so i just stayed in and went for liquidation and also i didn't want to get paralyzed uh and he goes out into his uh mega alakazam which is another reason i didn't want to bring something else in because he could trace some useful abilities from the rest of my team that i didn't want him necessarily having and so we just stay in here and get ko'd by the psychic and that allows me to go out into my high dragon i'm going okay hopefully he will think that i'm scarfed and switch out to komo'o he actually has protect just to scout for that but the idea is okay i brought it in so he should think that I'm Scarf and locked into Crunch. That's what I was trying to at least bluff right there. He does switch out into his um, Komo'o, which I am very, very happy to see. Because that is precisely why we have Draco Meteor. Um, he should know from that damage that I am pretty well invested into my attack. And I was very dismayed to see the Haban Berry right there. Because I would have KO'd this Komo'o cleanly if he didn't have that. So that was a very strong bring on his part. Um... Expecting me to switch out, he just goes for Flash Cannon, probably expecting me to go into my Xerneas or even the Slurpuff to set up. And I take that amazingly because of my uh, Assault Vest. Now I am kind of annoyed that I missed the second Draco Meteor, because now I will be in range of a Dazzling Gleam from Alakazam before I was actually right out of range. Um, but I do hit this Draco Meteor, which is great. I was worried he would swap out there to take advantage of it. Um, but we are able to take down the Komo'o, which I was very, very happy about. I didn't get to set up or be too annoying to my team. This unfortunately lets him know that I'm not Scarf because I switched moves, and he gets to go out into Genesect, and I have to look at my team and figure out, okay, what do I switch into a U-turn? What do I switch into an Ice Beam? And if he has Extreme Speed, there's a few different things he could have here, especially because he's a Shiny Genesect. And I'm just going to go with my generally dedicated switch in of Tentacruel, because I'm very bulky. And he does just go straight for U-Turn, which if I stayed in there, I couldn't really hit him too much. U-Turn might not have KO'd me because he got a special attack boost. Uh, here, I'm going, okay, can I take a Psychic from Alakazam? No, I cannot. And he also might have Psy Shock. Uh, so I just go directly back out in the High Dragon as he goes for a Future Sight. And I was like, oh, okay, that was actually pretty smart here. Because now he can go for Dazzling Gleam, and it is a roll from this range, but because I missed that Draco Meteor earlier, I'm not able to take it. I was very annoyed about that because now this means my Fortress is going to get hit by the Future Sight. And if he has Hidden Power Fire or something on Alakazam, that means my Fortress is going down. Um, I'm just going to go directly for um, my offensive move here, but I really want to Stealth Rush up because I knew I had a chance to set up the Slurpuff in the back. And just because of the Pokemon he brought, I really needed Stealth Rocks up if I wanted to have a chance at sweeping later on. Um, Future Side does a ton of damage, because that, that might have even been a modest Alakazam, I'm not sure. I wasn't expecting it to do that much damage, honestly. Here I was expecting a Water-type move, so I go right back out into my Tentacruel. And he does go for Surf, and I was just like, oh, okay, no Hydro Pump. I'm okay to see that. And then I realized how much damage it was doing, and I was like, is that Specs, or does he have the the orb for palkia i i was having trouble <laughs> determining if that were specs or if it was the orb and and maybe modest and i just went for a knockoff expecting him to swap out and it turns out that he was specs that might have actually been a misplay because knockoff uh granted he was doing so much damage i don't think i could have set up um but then he switches moves so i was like oh well huh so he's not doing as much damage but he's no longer locked into surf I really didn't have any Pokemon left that could have taken advantage of Surf, and he was smart enough to not lock himself into Spatial Rin because I had two Fairy types left. Why would you do that? Um, so I, I don't know if that was a misplay or not. I really think um, I could have played this better, though, because I went for Substitute first, thinking that he might switch out. Uh, but he goes for... The surf immediately and so now i have less hp if i had calm minded first that might have helped me out because then i would have been getting back more hp per turn i would have immediately reduced the damage that i was taking for example um but i also think that it kind of didn't matter at this point in the battle just because of the team that i brought uh, i was if i had brought scarf zernius to this matchup with the team that he bought i would have cleaned this whole team i i was really surprised to not see heatran or anything like that he brought a very, very effective team, especially for the squad that I brought, because none of the Pokemon that I brought to set up 
really got a chance to set up. My Barbarical got paralyzed. My um, Slurpuff hasn't even had an opportunity to come in just because of the offensive pressure he's been putting on me. And then my Xerneas was able to get in here, but just because of the repeated serves and the onslaught of damage here, I'm able to take out the Palkia, but he can just bring in anything to revenge kill me at this point. So um, that's kind of unfortunate. Now, on the other side of things, I do think uh, I possibly could have played better. Like, in realizing, in realizing that he was Specs, I might have maneuvered so that I could set up differently. I don't really know, because he was doing so much damage with Specs Surf. I could not have been able to set up with Slurpuff. I couldn't set up with my Xerneas. And, of course, Fortress gets KO'd from the Surf because he took the Future Sight earlier. So, uh... Yeah, that I, I just was kind of... I put myself into a checkmate position there. Almost really at team preview. Um, I really wish I had brought Scar Xerneas to this matchup. Uh, but that's okay. I can do a little bit here for differential at the very least. Because I should be able to live a Shadow Ball from Gengar. Because it's very likely that he has a Z move. But that's actually incorrect because he has a Life Orb Gengar. So from that range, it was also a little bit of a roll. Unless he were modest Life Orb. Um... McGingar is going to be able to clean up the rest of my party here just because I have two fairy types versus a poison type. Not looking very good. Uh, I would have really liked to get off the Earthquake on that Gengar because um, that would have severely hurt that Gengar and I would have felt pretty good about that. Actually, I think after the two Life Orb hits, Earthquake went up KO'd. Um, if he were modest, that were not a roll though. But if he was not modest, that was definitely a roll. Slurpuff, I was really sad about. I... I <laughs> Had all those cool calcs going, all right, I'll have this much speed, and I'll be this fast. Well, I'll speed as Halucha under grassy terrain. Totally didn't matter. Um, I did have fun making those sets, but I think I actually lost this game at Team Preview when I didn't have Scar Xerneas. Because just based on what he had, it would have been a game of bring in Xerneas, click Moonblast. Bring in Xerneas, click Moonblast. Like, Gengar can't take two Moonblast, and it's not Scarfed. I would have been Scarf tied with Genesec, but then I had my um, Tentacruel and my Specially Defensive uh, Fortress to bring into the Genesec. So, really, really lost that at the preview. But that is okay. Thank you very much, Donza, for this battle. I do hope I get to battle you again. That I haven't really battled you in a while, I don't think. Um, but yeah. So, um, first of all, Happy Mother's Day if you're still watching this video to this point of the battle video i doubt any moms watch my battles but if you have a mom or a mother figure in your life just make sure you take a minute to tell her happy mother's day uh even if you're watching this really really late as i am uploading this really really late so that means we are another loss on the board here we're gonna we're going on a little bit of a loss run and so the only way to break that is with a tie or a victory and a tie is just like losing to me so we're going to have to go for the victory. Next week um, will be week six in the GBA. And that means we will be going up against the Kansas City Girard Chiefs. So look forward to that matchup. I will see you all in a week. Goodbye now.